Hi everyone, um, I am here to give some book talks. My name is Caitlin and I am the children's librarian here at the Oak Bluffs Library. And I want to give this a couple of minutes, this is my first Facebook Live, so um, before I get into everything, I would love to just spend a couple of minutes and make sure people are, you know, have a little bit of time to get here. But um, to give you just a little bit of a sneak peek about what I'm going to be talking about over the next a little bit of time. Um, I have some new books with me here and Carolina who is our adult uh, programming coordinator she has been doing some adult book talks using um, the adult books that we get and today I have some board books, I have some early readers, I have a stack of picture books to go through and what else do I have? have some middle grade books and I also have a stack of early readers or sorry young adult books so like I said I want to give people a little bit of time just to tune in um, make sure they see this live if they want to and yeah and then I'll get started and I'll go over some of these I won't be reading anything but I'll go over some information that is in the kind of inside cover of them I'll tell you a little bit about them I'll try to give you a little bit of recommendations about what the books will be, what they're best for. So in terms of age group, reading level, things like that. So if you are tuning in, I'll get started. I, oh, to give you a little bit of, um, I guess, kind of a plan, I will go over the stack of new early reader books that I have. And then after that, I will go over picture books. And then I have one board book and then I'll go over what we call middle grade books, which are books targeted for ages eight and up, usually eight to eight to 13, maybe eight to 14. And then the last stack of books that I have are for young adults. So that is for ages 13 and up. So just know that if you're looking for a, a particular type of book, or if you have a child or you know a child that is a certain age, you know when to expect them. So the middle grade and the young adult books will be towards the end of this video. But the first thing that I want to start talking about is the new books that we have for early readers. And the first book that I have to show you is called The Gingerbread Pup. I'm just going to hold this up so you can see how adorable this cover is. So this is called The Gingerbread Pup. It's by Maribeth Boltz. And I know it's about a gingerbread pup, uh, but I wanted to let everybody know that it, it's not a holiday book. Instead, it celebrates winter, snow, being out in the forest. So this is a lot of fun. The one thing that I wanted to point out about our early readers is that you might notice when you go into the library that publishers have different standards when they kind of label an early reader book. So an early reader, in case you're not familiar, it's usually for readers who are just beginning to learn how to read or, um, you know, newly independent readers. So kids who are in kindergarten will probably be reading early readers, uh, first grade, maybe even second grade. And so the thing that I want to explain is you might notice that there is a three on the spine of this book and most early readers have that. But the way to kind of know which early reader is best for your child um, is what I'll explain in just a second because every publisher labels their books differently. This book has a three on it, but for another publisher that might be marked as a level one. So according to Random House Kids, which published this book here, a level three means reading on your own and they recommend this for grades one through three. So it says, is your child comfortable tackling new words? Does your child like to read on his or her own time? So that's what level three means. But I wanna tell you, I would recommend this book for kids who are just learning how to read, maybe emergent readers, maybe they're not quite reading on their own just yet. And the way, a good way to know about that is to count the number of words that are on a line in this book. And the second thing is to notice is how many lines appear on each page. So I can't read this book due to copyright issues, but I wanna show you instead. I can show you this page. So on this page here, you see that there are three lines. Oh, there we go. 
and on each line there are anywhere from three to four words. That's how you know that this book would be appropriate for either a newly independent reader or an emerging reader. Maybe they are still trying to tackle those tough words. They're almost reading on their own. Most books that are at this level are going to have sentences, maybe not sentences, but lines that have anywhere from three words to five words on any line. And each page will really only have maybe three, four lines total. So let me show you the next page. And this is what I mean. So there are six lines on this page, but if you notice, there are really only three words on each line. So I don't wanna to spend too much time on it, but that's just a little trick to know if this book is right for your child. So this one is a lot of fun, The Gingerbread Pup. It's a great way to kind of go into winter. Plus it has a cute little design. The next early reader that I want to talk to you about, which is also new, we just got this one in October, is called Pinkalicious and the Pinkettes. So this is very popular at our library. It's a lot of fun. We have a lot of early readers that have Pinkalicious in them. And I mentioned before in the last early reader that I just held up, the Gingerbread Pup, the publisher said was a level three. This one, which is HarperCollins, marks this as a level one. But the thing is, if you open it up, and again, because of copyright, I can't read it, I won't show it for too long, but you can see there are a lot more words and a lot more lines in this book. So the good thing to remember is not to quite go by what the number is on the spine, but to know how to identify how many words are in an early reader, how many lines are in it, is it super wordy, and that'll give you a better sense about which early readers are better for your child. So the next early reader that I want to show you is called Little Penguin and the Mysterious Object. It's by Tad Bentley. This one is a lot of fun because obviously it features a little penguin right here. I know there's a little bit of a glare and there is a whale right here and that mysterious object is probably this bicycle right here. So this one's a lot of fun. This one I would say it's marked as a level one. Uh, it is also by HarperCollins. But when you open it up to a page, you see that there are only two lines on each page. So it's I would say it's an even uh, lower, maybe rank, like a level one like they say. But going back to the Gingerbread Pup, you can see that has even less words than that book. So this one, is marked as a level one, which means short sentences, familiar words, and simple concepts for children eager to read on their own. So it's for kids who aren't quite reading on their own just yet. And the last early reader that I wanna share with you today is Fox Versus Winter by Corey R. Tabor. You can see that this fox is pushing a giant snowball across the ground. This book is a lot of fun. I think most kids, if not every kid, would enjoy it. I'll read you the inside cover, just so you know a little bit about it. It says, Fox does not like winter. None of his friends are around to play. He's bored and alone. Then, Fox has an idea. If he cannot escape winter, he will fight it. Which explains why he's probably um, pushing a snowball across the ground. So these are all brand new early readers that we just got within the last month or so. I wanna share them and remind everybody that if you're watching this video, you can check out any of these books. Um, if they are checked out by somebody at the time that you want them, we could always request it from another library. We could put you on the hold list so that you can get them. And I'm hoping to do this every week because these are not just all the early readers that we got last month. These are just a few that I pulled today to share with you. So these are just four out of the many that we have. The next book that I wanna show you, I have one board book to show you that we also got in October. And this one is called An Oval Submarine and Other Shapes. It's by Burnett Ford and Britta Teckentrup. So I show you the cover. You can see that we have an oval submarine here. And the reason why I chose this book and I wanted to share it with you is because this book is great at showing very young readers um, 
shape recognition, word recognition, and it teaches the shape. So I'll turn it to the first page. You can see that there's a circle. There we go on this page here. But then opposite of the circle that it shows you, it reinforces what that shape is, which is good for kids at that young age because they are still they're still acquiring language. They're acquiring new words. And to reinforce what that means, they put it into context. So they take that circle and you can see that they put it onto a tractor. So when a child reads this book and they see what the shape is, on the page right next to it, it shows you where they can find those shapes. In this case, they are, that circle is the wheels of a tractor. Now, I want to show you a couple of new picture books that we got. And the first one that I have is called The Suitcase by Chris Naylor Belestros, and we got it in October. And I'll read you the inside cover a little bit. I love the cover of this book, by the way. Look at how vibrant these colors are. The quality of my video might be a little bit dark, but trust me, we have a turquoise little creature over here, and then we have some oranges and reds over on this side. So I'll read you this little inside flap so you know a little bit about this book. It says, when a weary stranger arrives one day, with only, a, with only a suitcase, let me start over. When a weary stranger arrives one day with only a suitcase, everyone is full of questions. Why is he here? Where has he come from? And just what is in that suitcase? To learn the answers, they can either trust the newcomer or discover what they risk by not believing him. So this is a story about hope and kindness, truth and perception, and most important about how we treat those in need. So I can't really, again, I can't, due to copyright issues, I can't read the book, but I can very quickly kind of show you what it is. Um, I can show you just a little bit of a sneak peek. And one other thing that I want to mention, I know I keep throwing out these little tidbits, tidbits about all these books, um, but if you are really big into illustrations um, or you have a child who loves illustrations in particular and really likes the details of them, and is curious about them. A lot of times picture books will include the type of medium that was used for the picture book. So not every picture book, but a lot of them will. So for example, this one here looks a lot like watercolor. Let me show you this one. If you look at the trees, the edges of the trees here, it looks like watercolor. But I believe this book here actually tells you what the mediums were used for. And so if you're interested in checking, if you are looking at a picture book and you wanna know what the mediums were used for the illustrations, it's always gonna be on this copyright page here. It's usually at the beginning of a book, it's the one that says all rights reserved, text copyright 2020, blah, 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 all that stuff. That is gonna be where it'll be found. And in this case, it says the illustrations in this book were done in pen, ink, pencil, and watercolor. So they did in fact use watercolor. And it's just interesting, um, whenever I read picture books like this, especially if I have a class visit here at the library, um, I try to talk a little bit about illustrations because in picture books, it's called a picture book for a reason, right? You have the text and you have the illustrations and they both work together to tell a story. So I really try to emphasize the illustrations and to teach kids a little bit about them and at least point them out so that they're aware that you know, just as much work goes into the pictures in a picture book as the text. So this is The Suitcase, I'll show you one more time, by Chris Naylor Belesteros. And again, I just want to remind everyone that all of these books are available for checkout. So you can either do that by going online and logging into your account at clamsnet.org or by calling the library. In this case, if you want more information about picture books, you can call me, um, or you can email me and we can talk and we'll find you some books. So the next picture book that I wanna go over is A Very Quacky Christmas. And this picture book is by Francis Watts and Ann James. And the reason why I pulled this is because at the library, we place orders for, for books that cover holidays well before the holiday actually rolls around. So I know we're only, we're about halfway through November Obviously Christmas is in late December, 
Um, but this gives a chance for families and patrons and caregivers to check out this book well before the holiday rolls around so that other families are able to check it out. So again, this one looks like it is watercolor. If you look at the cover, I know there's a little bit of a glare. I want to read you the inside cover a little bit so you can so you can know what this book is about. It says, Samantha Duck is getting ready for Christmas. I'm going to give presents to all animals all over the world. Tortoise pal Sebastian isn't so sure. Christmas is not for animals. But with determination and heart and the help of their barnyard friends, Samantha and Sebastian work together to prove that Christmas is for everyone. Families will enjoy snuggling up to read this warm holiday tale of giving and sharing. It's a joyous reminder that with a bit of faith and the love of those around you, anything is possible. So, I will, I'll open up and I'll show you one of these pages, but again, due to copyright, I'm not going to read anything, and I'm just going to show you one page. So you can see that illustration right there with the watercolor. This book, I believe, it doesn't actually tell you on that copyright page uh, what mediums were used, so we can just guess. But again, it's good to point them out to children so that they can kind of, um, they can build that appreciation and awareness of illustrations in picture books, because once again, picture books are, are just that. They're pictures and they're text. So the next book that I want to book talk a little bit and tell you about, it's a book that we got in October. It's called Attack of the Underwear Dragon. You can see a giant uh, dragon here with a big giant pair of underwear. I actually read this book um, during a virtual story time to first grade. It was, it might have been the week that we got this book and the first graders loved it. It was a hit, it was hilarious. And I wanna read you the inside cover a little bit just so you have an idea about what this book is about. It says, Cole dreams of the glory of becoming an assistant knight in service to the great Sir Percival. He is ready to wear shining armor, ride magnificent horses, and master the skill of sword play. But when Sir Percival falters, Cole must face a harder challenge than he ever dreamed of. Can he rise to the occasion? Watch as Cole uses his training and ingenuity to save the town from the dreaded underwear dragon. Here's a funny story about going after what you want, even when faced with an enemy wearing the most gigantic underwear ever. And then to just give you an idea of the illustrations, let's see, let me find a good page. Uh, I'll show you this one here. So again, I'm just gonna show you a little bit of it. The illustrations I can tell you right now are very detailed. This book is very funny. And the next picture book, I have a couple more. I told you I have a lot of books to go through, I have a lot of different categories. We have picture books, early readers, board books, middle grade. So we have a couple more picture books. I know my lighting is getting a little, a little weird, I'm doing my best. So the next picture book that I have for us is called Brown, The Many Shades of Love. And this is by Nancy Johnson James and Constance Moore. So I'll show you this cover. This cover is beautiful. Let me show you just the inside page here that shows all the different shades of brown that it goes over. So this is a very, very lovely story. I'll read you the inside cover. It says, Mama's brown is chocolate, clear, dark, and sweet. Daddy's brown is autumn leaf or like a field of wheat. Granny's brown is like honey and Papa's like caramel. In this loving and lovely ode to the color brown, a boy describes the many beautiful hues of his family, including his own, gingerbread. This book is, is beautiful. Um, it's amazing. The illustrations are amazing. You know, you could read this to really any, any young child at any age, babies, toddlers, preschoolers, and I think that they would really appreciate the story for what it is. So just to give you an idea. Now, the next picture book I have is a little bit different. It is called Every Color of Light. It was translated. Um, it was written by Hiroshi Osada and illustrated by Ryoji Arai. I hope I pronounce those right. And this picture book, it's not like, you know, the underwear dragon. 
It's not like, you know, brown. Um, and I can show you what I mean by that. So if you open it up, most of the illustrations look like this. So if you know any kids or if you were, you know, if you have kids who are really interested in illustrations and art and the details that go into picture books, I think they would really enjoy this one. I wouldn't recommend this for a toddler or younger. Um, I mean, you could definitely read the story to them, but I think in order to really appreciate the story itself and the illustrations in it, it's really aimed for a an older audience. So it talks about all the different colors of light and art in nature. That is every color of light. And the last picture book that I have that I want to go over is called My Words by Grant Snyder. And this picture book is a lot of fun. Let me read you. The inside cover is a little bit short, so I'll read it right now. It says, words can be tiny, prickly, big or bright, but I started with no words. What was that like? So this book goes it focuses on language acquisition because when obviously when we have babies and when we're all you know young babies are absorbing everything that they see everything that they hear and they're taking those sounds they see those letters and they're forming understanding in their heads and so this story here my words goes over that that process and that journey you know when you start as babies or when you have babies and they're hearing these sounds and then they turn those sounds into words that's what this book really focuses on and this is another book that actually does on that copyright page I told you about earlier it does explain what the mediums are for the illustrations so in this one it says the artist used pen and marker on paper and colored the illustrations digitally using Adobe Photoshop so I'll show you this very first page just you know so you can see what I mean by that so you can see that the drawings themselves were done on paper and then the color was added afterwards in Adobe Photoshop. All right, so we just went through a whole bunch of books. I showed you some early readers. I explained a board book. I went through maybe, what was that, five or six picture books just now. So now I have two more categories left that I wanna book talk. The next category that I have for us is middle grade again I want to apologize for this kind of weird lighting that I have my phone is at a is at an angle for this and the fluorescent lights are right above me so the next category I have is middle grade and middle grade means that these books are for children anywhere from age 8 to age 14 um, right around in that age uh, that age range but middle grade books you know a middle grade book that was written for 12 and up might not be appropriate for um, an eight-year-old because of the reading levels but middle grade is what we call it for that general age group so this this first book that I have is called The Fabled Stables Willa the Wisp it's by Jonathan Oxier and it has this adorable cover this is what I would call an early chapter book you as you can see it doesn't have a lot of pages in this so that's what I mean by a book written for a 14 year old versus an eight year old. I would say this book actually is more appropriate for grades two and up. I think just to kind of show you the inside a little bit, you can see that the wording, there isn't a lot of words. There aren't a lot rather. Um, and there are pictures kind of scattered throughout the pages. And that's why I would say it would be appropriate for grades two and up. If you have younger kids, if you're reading with younger kids, they could definitely read the story or listen to it. And to tell you a little bit about this book, it's a series that features an eight-year-old who is a caretaker for rare animals. And you can see one of those rare animals right here, this wisp, looks like a rabbit wisp, I guess. I'm not quite sure what you would call it. You'd have to read the book. And it's actually a series so this is book number one you can see the one on the spine right here and what this series is really good at is creating this unique setting this imaginative setting with this eight-year-old character taking care of all of these magical creatures and to give you an idea I'll read the back 
It says, Welcome to the Fabled Stables, a magical haven filled with one-of-a-kind creatures. Here you will find the Gargantula, the Yawning Abyss, the Hippopotam Mouse, and Augie. Augie is the only human boy at the stables, and it's his job to care for the creatures. Every so often, a new empty stall appears in the stables with a creature's name on the gate. It's up to Augie to venture out and rescue that creature from mortal danger. Thankfully, he's not alone. Along with friends like Fen, a magical stick in the mud, and a whole island of animals, Augie must complete his mission before it's too late. So you can see that there's a little bit of action in this. You can hear that there might be a little bit of suspense there. And again, I just love the cover. So this is the Fabled Stables series, and this first book is called Willa the Wisp, and it's by Jonathan Oxier. The next middle grade book that I want to go over um, is actually, I would say, for grades four and up. So we're, we're jumping age groups just a little bit. It's called Zora and Me, The Summoner. And this book is actually the third and final book in the Zora and Me series, which started, I want to say it started around 2010 or so. And this book aims to honor Zora Neale Hurston's legacy. So it features Zora Neale Hurston and her family in this book and in this trilogy, but they are fictional tales. And so this, one of the great things that I really love about this series, this trilogy, is that this fictionalized tale might spark some interest in some of these readers to then go and explore Hurston's other work. So they, are, they get to enjoy the story here, all three books, and then maybe when they're a little bit older or maybe if they're curious right now, they can explore the other works that she's written before. And to give you a little bit of an idea about what this book is about, I'll read just a little bit of the inside cover. It says, For Carrie and her best friend Zora, Eatonville, America's first incorporated all-black township, has been an idyllic place to live out their childhoods. But when a lynch mob crosses the town's border to pursue a fugitive and a grave robbery, resuscitates the ugly sins of the past, the question of who should bear the blame for these trespasses becomes a hard duel between the town's first and only mayor and its charismatic preacher, the Reverend John Hurston Zora's father. And then it says at the bottom, in this fictionalized tale, award-winning author Victoria Bond explores the end of childhood for preeminent author Zora Neale Hurston. The other thing I want to mention about this book here is that at the very back of it, in the, on the last few pages of this book, there is a timeline of Zora Neale Hurston's life. So to show you a little bit of it, you can see the different years on the side there and different events from Zora Neale Hurston's life from those years. And then just a couple of pages after this, it also includes an annotated bibliography of Zora Neale Hurston's works. So again, I'll show you that a little bit here. And what I mean by annotated bibliography is that it has the title of, you know, all of her works, the year it was published, and then the author has included just a tiny little snippet, like a blurb almost, about that work in particular. So just to give you some ideas, some of the works that are mentioned in this annotated bibliography are Dust Tracks on a Road from 1942, and then it explains Hurston's autobiography tells the story of her rise from poverty to literary prominence. And this has a couple of different pages, so it keeps going on. And the last thing actually that I want to mention is that one of the last pages talks about children's books adapted from folk tales collected by Zora Neale Hurston. So these are the books that if you have young ones who are reading this, those are the stories that they might also be interested in because they were adapted from Hurston's works. So again, this is Zora and Me, The Summoner. It is the third and final book in the trilogy. And the author is Victoria Bond. The next middle grade book that I want to share with you is called Stick With Me by Jennifer Blecker. This book is about two middle school girls who navigate a new friendship and also life's difficulties together. And I would recommend this book for, again, for grades four and up. 
Let me read you a little bit up about the inside because this book really stood out to me when it first came in. Uh, actually, when I first saw it online before we had even ordered it. Um, because of the issues that the characters go through, I think readers, especially in fourth grade, fourth and up, could learn a lot from these characters. So let me tell you a little bit about them. Izzy's best friend is pulling away from her to become best friends with the Queen of Mean. Then her parents move the whole family into the garage apartment for a week so they can rent their house to make some extra money. And the family who rents it has a girl her age who will be sleeping in her room and going to camp at her school during winter break. Ren never wants to get off the ice, not until she's ready to nail her figure skating routine at sectionals. But then her little sister qualifies for a life-changing surgery at a hospital hours away. So her parents rent a house near the hospital and say the whole family has to stay for a week. Then they send her to camp at a school where she doesn't know anyone and the mean girls have it out for her. Izzy and Ren don't think things could get any worse, but in the end, each, uh, there's tape that's covering it. Each might be exactly what the other needs. So again, this is a nice little book. It has a lot of lessons uh, and teachable moments that uh, readers can learn from. So this is called Stick With Me by Jennifer Blecker. The last middle grade book that I want to go over, and actually we might even have some viewers right now who might be interested in this one because it is about Star Wars. So this book here is called Star Wars The Clone Wars Stories of Light and Dark. And as big as this book looks, just to give you an idea, I know it looks kind of big. It looks a little bit wide. Uh, there we go. Okay, I know it looks big, but the thing is, the text on the inside is actually quite large. And the paragraphs are broken up with these little symbols that I'll show you, if I can spot one. Um, here we go. So you can see that little symbol right there. And the thing that I really like about this book is that it's an anthology. And so what I mean by anthology is that it has, I believe, 11 different authors all writing about different stories of light and dark um, in this book. So if you have a child who you know, only wants to read for 30 minutes a day or 20 minutes or maybe an hour, you don't have to read this entire book. Um, you could even read it out of order if you wanted to because all of these stories, they're stories in themselves. So it's one book, but with all of these different kinds of stories. So, and like I said before I started this book talk, I'm sure we have a lot of Star Wars fans if you're interested in reading this too and you're an adult, that is totally fine too. Um, we have adults who check out young adult books. We have adults who check out picture books. So picture books aren't just for kids. Books are for everybody. And I just want to tell you some of the characters who make appearances in this book, uh, in these stories I should say, are Anakin, Yoda, Obi-Wan, Darth Maul, so many others. So I would recommend this book for grades three and up. However, I think a strong second grader could also read this book. Oh, I just got a notification that my phone might die. All right, so I think I'm going to call it here. I have some YA books, but I think what I might do is save the YA book talk for tomorrow. So I have, let's see, five, five YA books to talk about tomorrow. Um, thank you so much for everyone who stopped by and tuned into this. This is my first Facebook Live um, recording I guess or stream rather so I would like to do this every week because the library is getting new books every single month and while our island libraries are still closed I want to give everyone a chance to learn about these new books and if you can't do that in person then at least I can do it through a stream and hold up these books so if you liked anything I talked about log into your account online clamsnet.org or call the library you can also email me it's my first initial C and my last name Clark, C-L-A-R-K, at clamsnet.org. Um, you, you can also find that on the website too. But either way, get in touch with us if you liked any of these books. Again, I want to emphasize that these books are, you know, not just for, you know, a certain age group. You know, if you are an adult and you really liked the Star Wars book, you can definitely check that out. Books are not just for kids 
you know, picture books, board books, early readers. If you're interested in something, definitely check it out. Get in touch with us and we'll, we'll handle the rest. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. And just a reminder, tomorrow I will go live and I will do a book talk um, talking about some of our new early, sorry, young adult books. Our young adult books will be tomorrow. So thank you so much.